I'd like to talk about the concept of what a fraction is and some of the different forms that you may be using as you work with fractions. A fraction, just by definition, is a part divided by, that fraction bar really means divided, the total. The part tells you the part that you have. The total tells you how many make up one whole piece. So if I have a fraction, say, 3 fourths, that tells me in a picture that if I have something cut into four equal pieces, I would have three of those pieces. Now let's think about when your brother cut the cake way back when. This would be his piece, and this probably would be my piece. These are not equal pieces, which means they don't tell me what that fraction is. So the whole concept of a fraction is that you must have equal pieces. In this, there's four pieces that make up the whole, and I would have three of those pieces. So this depicts three out of the four. Three out of four. Let's look at a different example where I might have seven fourths. Okay, a picture like that would be that obviously I have more than one whole thing here. So the first one would be set into my four equal pieces, and likewise the second. And notice that these four pieces equal those four pieces also. So seven fourths, the first one, I would give you four out of four. Noticing right there, four fourths is going to equal one whole. And then here I'm going to have three fourths. And so what I've got is seven fourths is the same as one and three fourths. Okay. A fraction is a division problem. Whatever is on the top, excuse me, is going to be divided. So if I have a fraction like 16 fifths, that tells me it's going to be 16 divided by 5. 16 divided by 5. Now, we usually don't write our divisions in this form um, until you get to algebra. But for now, what we want to do is we want to put this into a form that is more usable for us. So what we write is the 5 goes into 16. Noticing here, the top number is going to be divided by the bottom. The numerator is divided by the denominator. Otherwise, we think the bottom goes into the top, or the denominator goes into the numerator. So let's look at this division. 3 goes into uh, 16, or 5 goes into 16 three times. Subtracting, I get a 1. That 1 becomes the top of my fraction, and the bottom is the 5. So what I actually have is 3 and 1 fifth is the mixed number for 16 fifths. 16 fifths is considered improper because the top's bigger than the bottom. So 16 fifths is not a simplified form. 3 and 1 fifth is the simplified form. Okay, let's start this time with a mixed number and change it to improper. Remember the last step we went from improper to mixed? Now we're going to go backwards. Okay, now thinking of this, thinking of it in a whole, I'm going to draw some pies and pretend like these are equally drawn. Okay. If I have three complete holes, that means I have five pieces there, five pieces there, five pieces there, and then the two-fifths gives me that I have two there for a total of five, ten, fifteen, or three times five, plus two. Now, let's pretend I don't want to draw a picture for every single problem that I do. So, mathematically, what did I do? I took 
5 times 3. So I could multiply the bottom number or the denominator times the whole number. And then how did I do the 2? I added it. So I can take 5 times 3 plus the 2, which is exactly the process. Um, 5 times 3 plus 2 gives me 17, and the bottom number always stays the same. So the process in your thinking cloud is you're going to take the 5 times 3 plus the 2. Bottom always stays the same. Okay. Um, one thing about fractions is that you must always simplify or reduce to lowest terms. If you don't, the problem is as wrong as if you did not start. So, to simplify, now remember your think clouds. Your think clouds, you say, well, I know that 10 is 2 times 5. And in your think cloud, you say, well, I know that 15 is 3 times 5. And looking at that, I say, oh, I've got a common factor of 5. So the process I use, without writing out this portion here, I say, I know that 5 goes both into both the top and the bottom. I set it up like this because I want a visual. I want to see that 5 because I want to say 5 into 10 goes 2 times, 5 into 15 goes 3 times. Notice that also, once you get into multiplication, you'll say, oh, that will cancel, leaving me the 2 thirds. But what I have is now the 2 and the 3 have no common factors, so this is a reduced form of 10 fifteenths. What if I have a fraction 16 twentieths? Okay, I look at it and I say, oh, they're both even. I know I can divide by 2. 2 into 16 is 8, 2 into 20 is 10. Okay, now as I look at the 8 and the 10, I say, whoops, I could have chosen another factor because these are both still even. 2 into 8 goes 4 times, 2 into 10 goes 5 times. Now, look at 16 twentieths where I can say, oh, there's really a 4 that goes into them both. 4 goes into 16 4 times, 4 into 20 is 5. Noticing here, I have the 4 fifths, whether it didn't matter if I took 2 steps to get to it or 1 step. So if you don't see the highest number right away, it's okay. Take smaller numbers and get down as low as you can or as in simplest form. What if we've got a fraction where the top's bigger than the bottom? You have two choices. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say bottom into top. So I'm going to say 9 goes into 15, goes one time for 9. Subtracting, I got 6 left. Notice that the 9 becomes the bottom of the fraction, and then the 6 is the top of the fraction. Oh, and I say, oh wait, 9, 6 reduces by 3's. 3 goes into 6 twice, 3 into 9 is 3. So my answer is going to be 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, but what would happen if I looked at the 15 ninths and I said, oh wait, I know that 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 15 5 times, 3 goes into 9 3 times. And then I say, oh, top's bigger than the bottom, so I'm going to have to divide. 3 goes into 5 once. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtracting, I took 2 left over. 2 is the top of the fraction. 3 is the bottom. So I have 1 and 2 thirds. Notice again, it didn't matter which one I do first, whether I divide or simplify, simplify by a common factor, because I have to do both steps before I get finished with that problem. So whatever you see first is your best approach. Let's look at a couple special cases. It's not that they're so special, but zeros and ones always confuse people, whether you're adding or multiplying, and that's what these cases are. Noticing right here, 
remember a fraction is a division. So you're looking and you're saying 7 divided by 7 equals 1. Or 8 divided by 8 equals 1. Or 102 divided by 102. Anytime you divide the number by itself, it's going to equal 1. So even though you started in a fractional form, it reduced itself very nicely. Okay, likewise here, anytime I have a 0 in the bottom, it's a division. 0 divided by 17, you ask yourself, well, how many times does 17 go into 0? It doesn't. So anytime you have a 0 in the top number or the numerator, it will equal 0.